Dr. G knows all too well that exercise and proper nutrition can go a long way to keeping you out of the morgue. But unfortunately, healthy habits aren't always enough. And such seems to be the case with her next decedent, Jeffrey Woods. So he's a 42-year-old male. No known medical problems. He eats right. He doesn't use drugs. He doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. But clearly something's wrong. It's mid-afternoon on a sunny Saturday, and Jeffrey Woods is just finishing up his day shift at a restaurant in downtown Orlando. He's been waiting tables here for over three years and is a favorite with the regulars. But today, something's not right. Uh, he told one of his co-workers he wasn't feeling well. In fact, he didn't even feel well enough to drive home. So he kind of sat it out for about an hour and decided maybe he should call his girlfriend. He spends probably another hour or so waiting to get a hold of her. It takes her another 45 minutes to get there. Finally, Jeffrey spots Grace pulling into the parking lot. He exits the restaurant and walks toward her car. But after a few labored steps, his knees buckle. Grace rushes to his side, but he's unresponsive. She calls 911. Emergency crews get there. He's got a regular heart rhythm. But as Jeffrey is rushed to the hospital, his condition rapidly worsens. Eventually, his heart stops. They try to work on him. But he dies in the emergency room. They finally pronounce him. Grace is crushed, and she can't imagine what could have killed her boyfriend so suddenly and unexpectedly. According to Grace, Jeff was the picture of health. He's a karate instructor. He's very into his health and uh, what he eats. And she says he doesn't smoke, he doesn't drink. Uh, he takes very good care of himself. And she says he doesn't have any medical history, that he's in great shape. So as she knows, he doesn't go to the doctor. But Dr. Jean knows Jeffrey can't possibly have been as healthy as he seemed. Healthy guys don't necessarily die suddenly. Something's going on. And she has a strong hunch what that something could be. 42-year-old African-American male dies suddenly. Uh, it certainly can be a heart attack. And that's what I'm thinking it's probably going to be. Still, it's too early to rule out other possibilities. The girlfriend also says he doesn't use drugs. You know, I've heard that before. You know, maybe he is using cocaine. That's certainly associated with sudden collapse. Now, the pressure's on for Dr. G to find answers and explain Jeffrey's sudden death to those he left behind. I don't know why my hair is bothering me today. So, when I do the external examination, the first thing I do is go through his clothing, look at his personal effects. And here, Dr. G discovers what could be her first clue. A roll of small bills that amount to $343. Now, that's a lot of money uh, just to be carrying around. Now, he's a waiter. That's a that's pretty, pretty good day's work. Or is he doing something else at work? You know, is he selling drugs at work? I often see large amounts of money with small bills on drug dealers. Only time will tell on that one. Dr. G next turns her attention to Jeffrey's body. Immediately, she can see that Grace was not exaggerating. Jeffrey is in peak physical form. Very lean, muscular kind of guy. Looks a stated age of 42, maybe even a little younger. As a first step, she carefully scans him for any signs of abnormality. I look in the uh, arms to look for any vascular scars. Now, they say he didn't use drugs, but you know, is there any sign of it? And there isn't. Dr. G's next stop is Jeffrey's head. And there, she does find something odd. The moist tissue lining his eyelids and mouth, called the mucous membranes, appear pale. But that could be from many things. It really doesn't alert me to anything at this point. Alrighty, so I got that, I got that. So when I end my external examination, I really don't know any more than when I started. He may look good on the outside, but he may not look good on the inside. Alrighty. So, 
I do my normal Y incision. <laughs> Nothing abnormal in the abdominal cavity when I first open it up. Uh, the organs all appear to be in this right location, and there's no free blood or fluid there. Next, she removes the chest plate. I'm going to be looking for anything I find that's out of the ordinary, and it would fit with uh, his symptoms, which would be you know, feeling ill and then a sudden, a sudden collapse. Taking into account the circumstances of Jeffrey's death, Dr. G goes straight to the prime suspect, the heart. And with one glance, she can see that something is terribly wrong. He's got something right off the bat that could have caused his death. You may be eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan if you are turning 65, have limited income, or you are moving. See how a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan could get you some big benefits, including this all-in-one WellCare Spendables debit card to use for over-the-counter health items. Find out how easy it is to get all of your original Medicare coverage plus extra benefits. You could have medical coverage, coverage for prescription drugs, dental, vision, and hearing, and the WellCare Spendables debit card to make getting the coverage you need more convenient. The WellCare Spendables debit card can be used for over-the-counter health items. And here's more good news. You can get a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan with a $0 or low monthly plan premium. How can WellCare offer all of those benefits for a $0 or low monthly plan premium? It's simple. Medicare Advantage and Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage are important parts of Medicare. WellCare has a contract with Medicare to offer and provide these important options to you. Call right now to get your free copy of the WellCare All-in-One Guide. Call 844-975-0005 now. There is absolutely no obligation for requesting this free information. WellCare offers benefits that go beyond the basics, and we make them easy to use so you can support your best health. Call a licensed sales agent to see if you are eligible to enroll today and get your free copy of the all-in-one guide with absolutely no obligation. Your free guide will provide information to make a smart choice for your health care coverage. Just call 844-975-0005. Remember, there's no obligation for requesting this free information. So call 844-975-0005. Call today. At Consumer Cellular, we pride ourselves on giving you fast, reliable, nationwide coverage at up to half the cost of the leading carriers. But don't worry. We've got more than that going for us. Like this beautiful store in Arizona, for example. It's the perfect place for me to tell you a little bit more about our phones and how they can become your phones. You name it, we probably got it. We have the top smartphones from all the major companies. If it's state-of-the-art cameras you want, we got them. If you want a smartphone with lots of bells and whistles but won't break the bank, we've got that too. We even have a flip phone, like the Iris Flip. We even have watches. I know what you're thinking. What if I don't have one of these amazing stores in my town yet? Can I get these phones sent to me? Yes, you can. Is it easy? Easy as pie. New customers save $50 when you sign up today. Call 800-918-5494. Find us in Target or visit ConsumerCellular.com to switch today. She knows what she's talking about. Pick up the phone. What made me choose SNHU was it was completely online and it was affordable. Searching for your future? Go to snhu.edu. I had lost about 50 pounds and kind of stalled. And then a friend had said, you ought to look at Weight Watchers Clinic. The combination of Weight Watchers and weight loss medication has changed my life. It's a different body, a different world. <laughs> Dr. G is examining the heart of 42-year-old Jeffrey Woods. His girlfriend, Grace, insists he was the picture of health. But Dr. G has just discovered something that indicates otherwise. Immediately we see something wrong. The heart's enlarged. Uh, typical a weight for a guy this size would be 350. His was 570. 570 gram heart in a small guy is huge. And that's not all. 
When she dissects the organ, she discovers another serious condition in his arteries. He's got at least an 80% narrowing of one of his coronary arteries by atherosclerotic plaque. So he's got the double whammy, the narrow blood vessels and the large heart. Typically, we would see that with somebody with long-standing high blood pressure. High blood pressure is the force that's exerted on the walls of the blood vessels of your body, namely the arteries. This added strain on the arteries causes the heart muscle to thicken. And as it expands, the muscle has difficulty getting oxygen, making it vulnerable to an arrhythmia. Now, could that have caused his death? It could have. It could have been a sudden cardiac arrhythmia. A fatal arrhythmia is an irregular heartbeat that short circuits the entire organ. But it leaves behind no evidence. So in order to determine if it's the cause of death, Dr. G must first rule out everything else. We've got to put all the pieces together because it could be from his heart, but I would like to see what the rest of him shows. All right. Now we look at his lungs. Now this is the guy that's supposedly the picture of health, and his lungs don't look good either. The first abnormality she sees is in the pleura, the soft membrane that encases the lungs. He's got some adhesions little fibrous connections you know normally your lungs should be able to move very freely in that space in your chest as you breathe out and breathe in and there's usually a thin amount of fluid a little fluid that kind of helps lubricate it in there and sometimes because of infection or inflammation those adhesions little scar tissue forms between the surface of the lung and the cavity where they sit such adhesions can be insignificant simply the result of previous infections or other minor lung problems. But then she dissects Jeffrey's lungs and finds something definitely alarming. The lungs clearly have scar tissue in them. Fibrosis throughout the lung, and they also had a lot of fluid in them. Both of these symptoms, fluid and scar tissue in the lungs, point towards a dark possibility. One of the possibilities with that kind of fibrosis could be, you know, Drugs. Many illicit drugs, including heroin and cocaine, contain impurities such as talc. Dr. G wonders if Jeffrey had been injecting such drugs, allowing the impurities to travel through his bloodstream and into his lungs. Over time, the particle buildup would have caused the kind of fibrosis or scar tissue she's now seeing. But she won't know for sure until she gets a look at the lungs under the microscope. His girlfriend is saying he's not using drugs, but we don't know until we test him. So I need to get toxicology, because toxicology clearly is a player here. Dr. G takes samples of Jeffrey's blood and eye fluid to submit for testing. But it will take at least three weeks for the results to come back from the lab. Anybody I know? Sure. Yeah. For now, she continues to scour Jeffrey's body for clues. And as she removes the liver, she can see right away that something isn't adding up. Normally when we have somebody die suddenly and unexpectedly, it's a very congested kind of brown liver. This one looked more pale. Dr. G now wonders if this finding could be connected to the clue she found earlier in his eyes and mouth. They kind of match the pale appearance of his mucous membrane. This indicates that none of these body parts were receiving enough oxygen-rich blood. But at this point, she's uncertain what it means. Things aren't looking right. His body's whispering something to me, but I'm just not sure what it's saying to me. And when she examines Jeffrey's kidneys, she finds another confounding clue. The organs are not only pale, they're also spotted with areas of extreme discoloration. They had kind of a mottled appearance. They're definitely uh, something wrong with those kidneys. <laughs> But her naked eye isn't giving her any answers. It's clear she'll need to take a much closer look at the evidence. I don't know until I look under the microscope. So I'm definitely going to have to start taking some microscopic uh, slides here. She takes tissue samples of the kidneys and other organs, hoping a magnified view will shed light on their strange appearance. Well, at the end of the internal, something's going on. There's some subtle findings. There was a not-so-subtle big heart. You know, if I wasn't curious, that would have been the answer. But something else is going on here. 
this body is telling me something, and I need to listen to it. And there's one body part left that could tell her what she wants to hear. Dr. G's morgue technician, Brian Maholsky, saw through the skull so that she can access the brain. Now, the head may, might scream the answer to us. You know, like we have a big belief. Because we already know he has some essential hypertension, his, you know, his heart's enlarged. Maybe he had a bleed in his brain, and that could explain everything. If that's how Jeffrey died, she may find an area of congealed blood within the brain tissue. She removes the organ and sections it with a blade. There's no evidence of a bleed inside the brain. Still, she can see that something isn't right. The brain looks kind of pale, too. So, the brain may be whispering something to me, too, but I really can't put my finger on it, and it doesn't really give me an answer. The physical examination is complete, but Dr. G has yet to decipher what Jeffrey's body is trying to tell her. I'm going to have to wait for the toxicology, and I definitely want to look at the microscopic examination. Hopefully, those, one of those two may give me the answer. Twenty anxious days pass before Dr. G receives Jeffrey's toxicology report. The first thing she checks for is the one that would be most devastating to Jeffrey's girlfriend, Grace. Evidence of illicit drugs like heroin and cocaine. He didn't have any drugs at all in his system. But there's more to the report. And as she reads on, Dr. G pays particular attention to the body chemistries revealed in Jeffrey's eye fluid analysis. That's very valuable to us because that's the only fluid I can check for electrolytes. Uh, your sodium, your potassium, your chloride, but also your creatinine. Those give us indications of dehydration and sometimes kidney function. When I looked at what that vitreous fluid told me, it was quite remarkable. Jeffrey has extremely high levels of creatinine in his system, a natural byproduct released by the body's muscles when converting food to energy. Normally, the kidneys filter creatinine from the blood into the urine. But when your kidneys start to fail, this creatinine will start going up because your kidney's not getting rid of it. Healthy kidneys keep the creatinine level between 0.6 and 1.2 milligrams per deciliter of blood. But Jeffrey's level had far surpassed the danger zone. This is 23. He didn't have any kidney function left. Looking at this figure, Dr. G now knows exactly how Jeffrey died. His kidneys literally shut down. It's clear he's in renal failure and this is what's killed him. But why? Why did he go into renal failure? Now, renal failure isn't the answer for me. Now I've got to figure out what's going on with him. If you, like many people, are covered by both Medicare and your state's Medicaid, here's something important to know. Now you could get even more health benefits than you already have. It's the United Healthcare Dual Complete Plan. To find out if you or someone you care about is eligible, it's easy. Call now to talk with us. We can help explain it all and answer your questions. Medicaid gives you benefits, and Medicare gives you some, too. But a dual complete plan can add even more benefits and features compared to original Medicare. You'll have a large network of medical providers to choose from. Zero dollar copays for routine covered dental services, plus prescription drug coverage and mental health support. And we can help with what matters most to you. There's the United Healthcare U card, it's your member ID, and so much more. With it, you'll have credit to help pay for healthy food, over the counter products, even your utility bills such as gas, electric, and internet. All at no extra cost. If you have Medicare and Medicaid, you could get a dual complete plan. So call now to talk with us. Our Medicare plan experts can help find the right coverage for you. We know healthcare can be confusing. United Healthcare can help straighten things out. And with over 45 years of experience, count on us to be there when it matters. With Dual Complete, get a large network of medical providers to choose from. Zero dollar copays for routine covered dental services, plus prescription coverage, 
and the U-card that helps pay for healthy food, over-the-counter products, even utility bills, all at no extra cost. If you have both Medicare and Medicaid, you may be eligible for America's most chosen dual special needs plan. Call the number on your screen and see how you can get more of what matters to you with a United Healthcare Dual Complete Plan. Here's why you should switch from Google to DuckDuckGo on all your devices. DuckDuckGo comes with a built-in search engine like Google, but it's private and doesn't spy on your searches. And DuckDuckGo lets you browse like Chrome, but it blocks cookies and creepy ads that follow you around from Google and other companies. And there's no catch. It's free. You make money from ads, but they don't follow you around. Join the millions of people taking back their privacy by downloading DuckDuckGo on all your devices today. Coming up next on True Crime Network. Dr. G is now certain that 42-year-old Jeffrey Woods died from kidney failure. But she's still missing a key piece of the puzzle. And the last place to look is the micros. The micros have us better give me the answer. The first thing I look at is heart. This heart really doesn't give me the answer. It, it just confirms what I saw with my eye. Next, she examines the lung tissue, but finds nothing more than what was apparent at autopsy. Fluid buildup and scar tissue or fibrosis. I put uh, two polarizing filters to see if there's any uh, objects like talc or something that would have caused that fibrosis. He doesn't have any. So it could be just idiopathic, meaning we don't know why he's got fibrosis. A lot of the time, you never find a cause. So far, she's found nothing to suggest why Jeffrey's kidney shut down so abruptly. But there's a critical slide left to check. So, and I immediately go to the kidney because I know he's in renal failure. And his kidneys look terrible. Dr. G twists the dial to sharpen the image. And what comes into focus is astonishing. The tissue is dyed. The blood vessels are very damaged. And this particular type of damage can only mean one thing. When I did the autopsy, there was something subtly wrong with those organs. It was whispering the answer to me, but I couldn't hear it. When I looked at the tissues under the microscope, the answer shouted out at me. To everyone around him, Jeffrey Woods is the picture of health. But looks can be deceiving. Although he supposedly takes good care of himself and exercises and eats right. Something terrible is going on inside of him. Jeffrey's heart is severely damaged by high blood pressure or chronic hypertension. You know, it's not that unusual to get a history that somebody's in great shape. Then I open them up and find heart disease. You know, particularly high blood pressure. Chronic hypertension is a silent killer. It, it goes along for years, affecting your blood vessels slowly over time. But Jeffrey's kidneys showed evidence of an unusual illness that's much more aggressive, malignant or accelerated hypertension. Malignant hypertension is a much higher blood pressure where it just goes way out of control really fast and really hard, causing havoc and damage uh, very acutely uh, to the blood vessels. The degree of pressure can be so high that that inner lining of the blood vessel is damaged. In turn, the damaged lining tears apart the red blood cells that are trying to deliver oxygen. The condition is called microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. And it explains why Jeffrey's eyes, mouth, and some of his organs appeared pale. We'll see these very pale organs because although he's not bleeding out, his blood's breaking up on the inside and not able to get through there. But worst of all is how the effects of malignant hypertension devastate his kidneys. The blood can't get to the kidney, the kidney starts to die. That's causing the waste products no longer to be filtered out. His blood chemistries are completely out of whack. He's feeling tired, he's probably getting nauseous. Based on his creatinine levels, Dr. G suspects these symptoms began long before his collapse. If he had a normal creatinine, to get to a 23, 
It would take at least 10 or 11 days. He's going about his daily business, kind of probably brush off some of these feel. He's probably getting a little fluid buildup, shortness of breath. But he's, he's working through it. He's not listening to his body. Jeffrey doesn't share his symptoms with a soul, not even his girlfriend. And as he begins his afternoon shift, his condition rapidly deteriorates. And by the time he called his girlfriend, his kidneys were totally shot. And as the waste products build up in his blood, it places an unbearable strain on his heart. Most likely, the final straw is a cardiac arrhythmia. And if you have uh, arrhythmias of your heart, you can suffer cardiac arrest. At this point, there's simply no stopping the disastrous chain reaction. And Jeffrey collapses with no hope of resuscitation. His body uh, has just got too much wrong with it. Once we had the cause of death, I called the girlfriend to try to explain it to her, and she was so surprised. She thought he was just in such good shape, and he looked so healthy. But Dr. G tells her there might be a reason why Jeffrey developed malignant hypertension. Malignant or accelerated hypertension is really rare. Less than 1% of people who have chronic high blood pressure ever get anything like this. But there's something that he possibly has that's even rarer than just the malignant hypertension. Maybe he has a scleroderma, a very rare uh, connective tissue disease. Jeffrey didn't have any clear external signs of scleroderma, such as scarred or discolored skin. But internally, the disease can also cause scarring in the lungs, and it's known to trigger malignant hypertension. So it could explain his kidneys and his lungs, and it would unify the whole thing. It's a hunch, it's a, it's a theory, um, but I think it's a pretty good one. Still, all the theories in the world can't account for the tragic nature of Jeffrey's death. This guy could have done a lot to save himself. He should have listened to his body because you know, there are good treatments now, and chances are that they would have uh, been able to treat this. So I think what people should take away from this is that, you know, listen to your body. If it's trying to whisper to you, listen. Understanding the chain of events that precede a sudden death can be the key to closing any autopsy. But when a woman is found in a pool of blood on her bathroom floor, Dr. G is left with precious little to go on. We've got a woman who's on the floor, face down. What happened to her? How did she end up on the floor in her house? Anyone home? And here I be. How's it going, honey? Know the lock of head hero. More sympathy cards. Your mom was well loved. I hope you know how grateful she was to have you. I know. Speaking of grateful, what is it? It's a text from United of Omaha Life Insurance Company. Mom's life insurance. Life insurance? So soon? Just like they said. <laughs> My sister. Always looking out for her family. <laughs> I can still hear her. I don't want my deal to be your problem. <laughs> this check will help a lot. If you're age 45 to 85, you can't be turned down for up to $25,000 in life insurance from United of Omaha. Policies start at just $6.38 a month, and benefits could be paid in as little as 24 hours. How did she qualify? You know, with her health issues. With these policies, health issues don't matter. She was so relieved. Policies are available with no health questions, no medical exam, no blood tests. I just assumed life insurance would be way over my budget. No one kept a tighter budget than mom. <laughs> if she can manage the rate, you can too. Your rate is locked in for life. The cost of a funeral can be $9,000 or more. With one call, you can give your loved ones the protection they need to help pay these costs. And unlike some policies, benefits are payable from the first day. Mom just felt better knowing you'd have help, and I couldn't be more grateful. You should call United of Omaha. I guess I'll never stop loving to my big sister. <laughs> Don't put off life insurance. Call United of Omaha today. Call 800-305-0596. You can't be turned down. Call today to lock in your rates. 800-305-0596. That's 800-305-0596.
You may be eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan if you are turning 65, have limited income, or you're moving. See how a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan could get you some big benefits, including this all-in-one WellCare spendable debit card to use for over-the-counter health items. Find out how easy it is to get all of your original Medicare coverage plus extra benefits. You could have medical coverage, coverage for prescription drugs, dental, vision, and hearing, and the WellCare Spendables debit card to make getting the coverage you need more convenient. The WellCare Spendables debit card can be used for over-the-counter health items. And here's more good news. You can get a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan with a $0 or low monthly plan premium. How can WellCare offer all of those benefits for a $0 or low monthly plan premium? It's simple. Medicare Advantage and Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage are important parts of Medicare. WellCare has a contract with Medicare to offer and provide these important options to you. Call right now to get your free copy of the WellCare All-in-One Guide. Call 844-975-0005 now. There is absolutely no obligation for requesting this free information. WellCare offers benefits that go beyond the basics, and we make them easy to use so you can support your best health. Call a licensed sales agent to see if you are eligible to enroll today and get your free copy of the all-in-one guide with absolutely no obligation. Your free guide will provide information to make a smart choice for your health care coverage. Just call 844-975-0005. Remember, there's no obligation for requesting this free information, so call 844-975-0005. Call today. It's early in the morning in Orlando, Florida, and Dr. G is on her way to the District 9 morgue. Oh, let's see what we got going on today. I think the news is coming. It's a demanding job. But after more than 20 years as a medical examiner, Dr. G still finds her work exciting. Every day it's a new mystery, it's a new challenge. And her next case is no exception. <laughs> 53 year old Florida resident Melinda Lopez never had children of her own. But she loves her niece Bree as if she were a daughter. They talk almost daily, even though Bree goes to graduate school more than 2,000 miles away in San Diego, California. Until one morning in October, when Melinda suddenly stops answering her cell phone. Her niece tried to get a hold of her over a couple days, and she didn't answer the phone. She became very worried about her. She called her neighbor, uh, hoping that the neighbor would go over there. Using a spare key, the neighbor lets herself in. At first, it seems as if no one's home. But as she turns a corner at the end of the hallway, she makes a gruesome discovery. Melinda, face down on the bathroom floor. In a pool of water and blood. She calls 911, but she's clearly been dead there for a while. When Bree learns the news, she's devastated and overwhelmed with questions. She's in another city, and she's very upset. And she really is wanting to know why she died. Dr. G begins by reading through Melinda's case file. And based on the circumstances at the scene, one theory immediately jumps to mind. Is it one of our, you know, thousands of home accidents that we see come through uh, medical examiner's offices around the country? She's on the floor, face down. There's water on the floor. There's a bucket there that she appears to have been filling the toilet with. Maybe she slipped and fell on the water uh, and hit her head. You know, accidents happen. The falls are one of the number one ways uh, in the house that you can die. And there's a lot of hard things in the bathroom, the edge of the tub, the edge of the uh, toilet. So a fall in the bathroom can be quite deadly. 
But then, in brief statement to investigators, Dr. G discovers a clue that could suggest a more tragic scenario. We talked to the niece. They say she's been depressed for a while. She thought she was taking antidepressants. So overdose is a possibility. Could this be maybe a suicide? Her families are always upset when you call something up. An overdose, a suicide, uh, especially when it's out of the blue. Bree is now terrified that she may have missed important clues and that her aunt could be alive today if she'd only been a better listener. But like so many deaths in the morgue, it's also possible that Melinda simply died of natural causes. Her heart is a possibility. Like the heart attack and she just goes down. A key detail in the report heightens her suspicion. She smokes about a pack and a half of cigarettes a day and has been doing that for a long time. Smoking really does nothing good for you. There certainly increases the chance of having atherosclerosis. Smoking adds us to a whole other dimension to the way you can die. We're really not going to know why she died until we do the autopsy. So we'll just have to see. I should have uh, got a cup of coffee before I started this. <laughs> the first thing we do is really we sit back and get an overview. And the overview really shouldn't look that good. She looks older than her stated age of 53. Clearly has a lot of wrinkles. She's got, you know, dirt on her feet, dirt on her nails, thin arms, and not a lot of muscle on her. She's uh, it's a woman who looks like she's neglected herself. The question is, could this state of neglect reflect a worsening state of depression? It's possible, but it's not something Dr. G can determine from an external autopsy. What she can investigate is whether or not Melinda sustained some type of fatal injury. Uh, I'm looking for evidence of a trauma, any trauma, because uh, even a subtle bruise can maybe uh, give us a clue to what happened. And it's not long before she spots what appears to be a lot of suspicious bruise. There's some green discoloration going from the lower abdomen onto her thigh and a little bit onto the lower chest. But on closer inspection, she can see that the discoloration is not a result of trauma. I think it was more a combination of congestion where the blood is settling, and uh, that also is the area that was starting to decompose. You know, she's face down, so that's very common. Moving on, Dr. G checks Melinda's head for injuries and right away takes note of the blood around her mouth. I think that's post-mortem when the little blood vessels break uh, inside the mucous membranes after death. Let's get a, a towel we'll clean up and let's take another picture of this guy. She doesn't have a lot of trauma to the face that I could see. I palpate her scalp. I don't really feel anything. But more than 20 years' experience tells Dr. G that negative findings on the outside do not necessarily indicate an absence of injuries on the inside. You may not always see the trauma because of a, a full head of hair on a, a particular woman. One of my hypotheses is that she hit her head on the side of the toilet. And so we'll go ahead and just uh, see if that's where the money is. I'm Andrea, and this is why I switched to shop. It gave me so much peace of mind. If we make a change, my site's not going to go down. And just knowing that I have a platform that we can rely on, that is gold for us. Start your free trial today. Hi, I'm John. Hey, I'm Janine. I'm Steve, and I've been a consumer cellular customer for eight years. Three years. Eleven years. When they asked me if I wanted to be in a testimonial commercial, I said, sure. I said, sure. I said, sure. But I got a tournament to get ready for, not at the fish or bite. But it's a beautiful day. We started looking for another provider primarily because we felt like we were paying way too much. I chose to switch because of the savings. It was amazing. Way cheaper than where I was. I could hardly believe that my bill was so small. I'm paying less than $30 a month. It's a great service for a great price. Unlimited talk and text with flexible data plans starting at $20. Plus, for a limited time, new customers save $50 when you sign up today. The place that I live in is heavily forested. There's a lot of trees. 
what got me to be a customer really to tell you the truth was the reception and the coverage of consumer cellular i travel a lot i need coverage no matter where i am and whether i'm in augusta georgia or pebble beach california i know that i'm going to be covered with consumer cellular i love to go far away places remote places i haven't had trouble with coverage no drop calls consumer cellular offers fast reliable nationwide coverage plus for a limited time new customers save 50 dollars when you sign up today when we switched over from Verizon to Consumer Cellular, it was a really painless process. Just kept the same phone, I kept the same number. Anytime I call customer service, it's US based. It's nice to know when I have an issue that I can have a real conversation. Customer service has been great. I just get a bill at the end of the month, it's on auto pay, and it's super easy. And as AARP members, we also get a nice discount. That's right. AARP members receive a 5% discount. Make the switch now to the most awarded brand by JD Power. New customers save $50 when you sign up today. Call 1-800-279-2213. Or visit ConsumerCellular.com to switch today. cash now to get a $100 gift card for a free quote. I have PCOS. It can cause unexplainable weight gain. Having to go through Weight Watchers Clinic and now taking a DOT one, you just feel that extra level of support. And I'm like two pounds away from my goal weight, which is like... There was a party. There was a UK football player that was shot. She called me and said, I think I know something about a murder. She knew what he was capable of. Next date line. Dr. G slides her blade across the scalp of 53-year-old Melinda Lopez, who was found dead on the bathroom floor in a pool of blood and water. Her grieving niece, Bree, is terrified at the prospect that Melinda may have killed herself and is hoping Dr. G will find another explanation. A loved one dies in another city, and they, they're looking for me for answers. And although the clues are scarce, Dr. G has her own hunch. She's in the bathroom, face down. <laughs> Maybe she slipped and fell on the water uh, and hit her head. All righty, now, so we peel the scalp off. That's a good place to look for bruising. And she didn't have any. But Dr. G can't be certain until she removes Melinda's skull cap and looks inside for any internal bleeding. And then I will take the calvarium off and look at the brain. But her brain didn't have any swelling, and when I slice it, it showed no evidence of hemorrhage. You name it, that brain didn't have it. It's definitive. Melinda did not die of a head injury. But it's still possible that a fall in the bathroom caused fatal trauma elsewhere. We've got the whole rest of the body to look at to hopefully come up with the cause of death. Okay. Dr. G makes a standard Y-shaped incision, then peels back Melinda's skin and continues her search for signs of internal injury. It could be broken ribs and a punctured lung. We want to look for rib fractures. We want to look for bruising. She closely examines the organs in situ and is surprised by her findings. There's really nothing like bleeding or bruising on the inside uh, to say that that um, had any role for death. I think we've safely ruled out trauma. With the prime suspect now ruled out, it's looking even more possible that Melinda may have succumbed to a long battle with depression and took her own life with a drug overdose. But the only way to find out for sure is to run a series of toxicology tests. So I remove blood to check for drugs. That should be enough. We'll look to see if there are any substances that could have caused her death. 
and we'll take our eye fluid, the vitreous fluid. We'll look at our eye chemistry uh, because like a doctor can go and check your blood. I can't do that because your cells are already starting to break up and all those things are messed up in your blood. But your eye fluid is still a little protected because there's no free cells, like the red blood cells that are breaking up in there. And so that will stay a little more pristine for a longer period of time. So the vitreous fluid is very important in some of these dyes because they will allow me to check some things, which I normally wouldn't be able to check for after you die. But the toxicology results won't be in for several weeks. For now, she pushes on with the autopsy, looking for anything that could help explain Melinda's sudden death. So I have to take each organ out one by one and examine it. She begins with the lungs, and right away, she spots trouble. They don't look that great. They've got a lot of black pigment from smoking. They've already got some breakdown, what we call emphysema from smoking. Doesn't look like it's bad enough to kill her. Still, Dr. G suspects that Melinda's heavy smoking may have caused her death by inducing heart disease. And that's where she goes next. Scalpel in hand, Dr. G carefully slices through the membrane that envelops the heart. I open up the pericardial sac, there's no excess fluid, and of course, uh, there's no free blood. She then removes the heart from the chest cavity and dissects the arteries, where she immediately finds her first concrete clue. She does have atherosclerosis or narrowing to the coronary arteries, one of which is getting severe. Her right coronary artery was filled up 70-75% from plaque buildup. That's when it starts to get really critical um, and uh, you easily have problems with that. We often see it uh, as a result of years of smoking. Smoking contributes to heart disease in at least two ways, by constricting the arteries and by causing bad cholesterol to accumulate in the same narrow vessels. In Melinda, Dr. G even finds damage in the aorta, the largest artery stemming from the heart. Well, her aorta is uh, typical of a long-term smoker. It's actually, the, the cholesterol is built up in the wall and it's like broken through the lining. And so it's just, you see this kind of gooey necrotic stuff just coming out of the wall of your aorta. It is not a pretty sight. Although Dr. G now has evidence that Melinda's smoking definitely took a toll on her heart, she doesn't see any sign of an acute heart attack, such as pale, dead tissue. You know, the heart's a possibility, and it's right there on the borderline causing her problems. It's not a slam dunk, and we'll have to see what the rest of the autopsy shows. Her next stop is the abdominal cavity, the stomach, spleen, and pancreas where she's looking for any sign of natural disease. Nothing's giving me any clear-cut uh, indication of what went on. But when she gets to Melinda's liver, she spots another clue. This is a lot of fat on here. It has kind of a pale yellowish uh, appearance. It's enlarged. It's the anterior edge, the front of it is rounded. Usually you have a nice sharp edge. It really appears to have some uh, what we call fatty metamorphosis or fat uh, within the cells. I'm seeing really a severe fatty liver. Though severe, Dr. G doesn't believe it's fatal. But it is puzzling because a fatty liver is most often caused by obesity or alcoholism. And Melinda has neither in her profile. She's clearly not obese and I don't have a history of drinking. But the number one reason for fatty liver is alcohol. A consumption. Now, Dr. G wonders if Melinda could have been hiding an alcohol problem from her niece, Bree. Deceased give up their secrets to me in the morning. Sometimes things that they don't tell their family, uh, especially drugs, alcohol. While the liver may reveal secrets about Melinda's life, it doesn't shed any new light on how she died. With the autopsy complete, Dr. G has just one chance left to uncover the truth behind this mysterious death. But a haunting scenario weighs heavily on her mind. There's uh, 
possibility that it could be some type of overdose. So I'm hoping, you know, toxicology is going to give me the answer. And we're just going to have to wait and see. What happened to her? How did she end up on the floor in her house? This is a Morgan & Morgan airbag alert. Your car's steering wheel could be a literal ticking time bomb. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is calling for a recall of 67 million airbag inflators. This could affect tens of millions of cars, the largest in U.S. history. At least two people have died so far. Allegedly, their airbags fired shrapnel at them upon inflating. Others have suffered skull fractures, lacerations, and other injuries. If you or someone you know suffered any injuries involving a deployed airbag, even if your accident was your fault, you could be entitled to compensation for medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering, and other damages. Morgan & Morgan has already recovered millions. Act now and do not delay. Get America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. Call 844-400-9583. That's 844-400-9583. Or visit ForThePeople.com to learn more. Hey, I just got a text from my sister. You remember Rick, her neighbor? Sure. He's the 76-year-old guy who still runs marathons, right? Sadly, not anymore. What? You mean... Mm-hmm. Just like that. Wow. So sudden. Um, we're not about to have the we need life insurance conversation again, are we? No. We're having the we're getting coverage so we don't have to worry about it conversation. So you're calling about the nine ninety five a month plan from Colonial Pen? I am. We put it off long enough. We are getting that nine ninety five plan today. Is it time for you to call about the nine ninety five plan? I'm Jonathan from Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company. Sometimes we just need a reminder not to take today for granted. It could be the death of someone you know or a health scare. That's why today could be a great day. Call for free information about Colonial Pen's nine ninety five plan. If you're age 50 to 85, you can get guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance starting at just $9.95 a month. There are no health questions, so you can't be turned down for any health reason. This is permanent coverage. Just pay your premiums for lifelong security. The 995 plan is Colonial Pen's number one most popular whole life plan. Options start at just $9.95 a month. That's less than 35 cents a day. Your rate can never go up. It's locked in for life. Don't put it off. Take the first easy step. Call today for free information. And you'll also get this free beneficiary plan. So call now. Call 1-800-243-5651 for your free information and free gift. That's 1-800-243-5651. There's no risk or obligation. That number again is 1-800-243-5651. 1-800-243-5651. Call now. Hello, Colonial Pen? Detect now and lets me stay connected on the nation's largest 5G network with unlimited calls and texts for zero dollars a month. And it's so easy, all I have to do is download the app. Text now is free phone service at my fingertips. Download now. Most deodorants just do armpits. Dove does more. Meet Dove Whole Body Deo for thighs, shoulders, knees, and those. Try new Dove Whole Body Deodorant. Three weeks after Melinda Lopez is found dead on her bathroom floor, her toxicology report lands on Dr. G's desk. Melinda's niece, Bree, fears the worst, that her aunt tragically took her own life. Dr. G is hoping the report will tell a different story. The first thing I look at is to see if there's any drugs or alcohol. Uh, she's negative on drugs and alcohol. It's clearly not an accidental overdose. It's clearly not a suicide. It is an enormous relief to Bree. But the results pose another problem. Dr. G still has no idea what could have killed Melinda Lopez. Sometimes at the end of the autopsy, you don't know why they died. I was hoping for the answer because these are a lot of work when you can't figure it out. You got to start at square one and start kind of rethinking it out. Line by line, she scours the rest of the toxicology report, looking for anything that could shed light on Melinda's death. And it isn't long before she comes across something unexpected in the vitreous levels. 
when I look at that ice fluid, she has a high glucose level, which we typically see in uh, somebody who is diabetic. Diabetes. This would explain Melinda's fatty liver, because it's known to increase the risk of developing liver disease. But Melinda has no history of diabetes, and it rarely leads to an unexpected death. But it's uncommon to see somebody dying at home from diabetes. So what's going on? Then, Dr. G makes another discovery in Melinda's lab results, and she can hardly believe her eyes. Something that I really didn't expect was that it really all points to one thing. I know why she died. It's a sunny fall day in Florida, but Melinda Lopez is having trouble enjoying it. She's stuck inside, feeling ill, but she has no idea how sick she really is. Even though she probably didn't know, and no one in her family obviously knew, she had diabetes. Toxicology results confirm that Melinda was suffering from diabetes, a condition that causes glucose levels to rise because the body is unable to produce enough insulin or is resistant to it. Insulin is the hormone that is made by the pancreas that takes your blood sugar, your glucose, and brings it into your cell so your body can use that for energy. What happens is without the insulin, the glucose levels just keep getting higher and higher in your blood, but your cells are starving. Your cells don't have any energy. Melinda does her best to manage her mounting fatigue, but her body is growing increasingly starved of glucose. When your body uh, can't use glucose for fuel, it has to break down other things. And one of the things it breaks down is fat. But burning fat for fuel causes a highly acidic byproduct, acetone, to build up in the blood. In the tox report, Dr. G saw that Melinda's acetone level was extremely elevated. And this is what gave her the final clue. That acetone then starts making you feel horrible. As your blood becomes more and more acidic, your muscles ache, you feel like you have the flu, you're nauseated, you're vomiting, you're in abdominal pain. She probably was having symptoms for an extended period of time. And with no medical intervention, her condition eventually erupts into a full-blown crisis known as diabetic ketoacidosis. Because of the increased acid in your blood, uh, your organs don't work well. You feel horrible. You go to the bathroom. So I don't think it's a coincidence that she dies in the bathroom. But there gets to be a point when you just don't have enough fuel to the brain and your brain stops functioning and she passes out and she's slipping further and further into a coma until she dies. She died from diabetes, but this is you know, 100% treatable. The root cause of why she died is that she ignored her symptoms and she didn't take care of herself. Why is it that she would ignore these symptoms? You know, maybe the bottom line is the depression that uh, kept her uh, from seeking help. For Bree, the confirmation that Melinda didn't take her own life provides some measure of peace. But the revelation that her aunt disregarded so many warning signs comes as a sobering lesson. You don't want to run to the doctor all the time, that's fine. But there are a few things you're just going to have to get checked out occasionally, and that's going to be your blood sugar, cholesterol level, and blood pressure, because those are silent killers and you may not have any symptoms. You know, you just occasionally need to go to the doctor. If nothing else, get those three things checked. Yes. Dateline.